Well, this piece is a, uh, a third in a series. It started out as the idea of a gemstone that I held in my hand and I felt that it seemed like a utensil. And so I, I was working with it and, and felt that it seemed more like a paintbrush than anything. And I sort of have a, a fascination with paintbrushes and their tie-in with arts and the arts. And when I was younger, uh, everyone that knew that I was artistic would give me paintbrushes as a gift, even though I've never painted. And so I, I like to tie that into some pieces, and, uh, and that was really where it started. I tend to work in my sketch pad a lot, so for this piece, because it is a pendant with a bale and the little resin box protrudes out of the back, I had to analyze how the layers of metal were going to fit together, how to sandwich the object in there and hold it securely between the layers of metal, and then also how to put the bale on the back. So for, for this, I would, you know, I would design the way that it looks from the front first. So I came up with this little birdcage motif. And then I thought, okay, now I, I have this little resin box. This is the one I started with to, to see if the resin would even stay in the box, and it did. So once I discovered that, I thought, well, how am I going to hold it without soldering because it's recycled metal? So I came up with the little flap design, and I knew that if I drop that through an opening, these flaps would, would hold it in that hole like that. So then I had to go to the side. So here's the top layer of metal with the, this part is here. So we go across. So here's the top layer of metal. There's a window here to see the bird. Then the resin box sits in there with the flaps like this. And then there's the back plate of the metal like this with a hole cut in it so this box can go through. So when you squish all these together with a rivet through, these little wings on the outside of the box hold that in between the layers of metal. The clay itself doesn't weigh, and it doesn't have to be solid clay. We can ho easily hollow out the clay mm -hmm. elements so that um, we can get sort of a volume and a, a sense of abundance or something spilling out without um, a lot of physical weight. Yes. But I definitely try to, I try to give the illusion of a lot of huh. metal without really right. laying it in there because I can, we can back things, we can give nice heavy edges, you know, take some wire and, and rim something so right. that it feels the edges nice and beefy and not thin, but you can get away with a much thinner sheet than 18 gauge. And know. we talked about the importance of, of looking at it from a distance and up close. And um, I think the drawings are, are drawn to be um, graphically impactful, and and the way you're you're constructing them out of elements, they have a a, a presence and a, a heft um, yes. that is important. Yes, I do try to go through with like um, these edges. I really, really tried to whack down the edge good so that it, it thickened the edge and made it a little bit beefier looking than the actual piece was. And then you sand it back, and it looks nice and chunky. Because I want that, if it was thinner, right? like you said, bezel wire, but bezel wire in that respect wasn't, was going to be right. way too thin. And we may um, change that. oxidize this and then sand the surface or do gold overlay on one circle but not the other or mm -hmm. ways to dis, uh, just to distinguish this.